What's up, buddy? This here is my blue Texas cichlid. I've had him for a while now. Um, I've actually been ignoring this tank, kind of, purposely. Um, I'm trying to, I was trying to see how long it'd take for me, you know, if I let it go, what would happen. And a lot of the experiment just turned out to get weird uh, different algae colors. But they eventually went away and then came back and away and came back in the blackness on some of the decorations. That's about all that came out of the experiment was if I really neglected my tanks because my tanks are always, everybody, you know, loves them and says they're so clean and awesome. And I just wanted to see if I'd let one go, how long it could, you know, be self-sufficient, I guess. And that guy's just growing. I can't wait to give him a big tank. Let him be a giant fish. Um, and yeah. Other than that, this does have some natural filtration and some store filtration. I can't believe. Oh, I forgot. That was just a fry. That was a fry, like a tiny little fish, a couple, a couple weeks ago. And then uh, I did see my bristle nose. Haven't seen that in a while. Big old horn nose pleco. And uh, the Colombian tetras are doing fine. The cheeky cichlids are really, really pretty. Here comes big giant grami here. I do need to clean the outside of the glass. I apologize. But like I said, this was just a neglect experiment. Besides, whoa, besides the fish being skittish now from me, unless I turn on that light. Except for the grami. The grami's super smart or something. Like, immediately when he sees me in the hall, he goes nuts. So. I just like walk down the hall and he goes crazy. And over here, the blue Akaras by themselves and no gravel experiment. That worked out pretty well, honestly. He's pretending to be dead right now, not moving. <laughs> but no human contact back here has actually kind of made their colors pop. Um, the water's fine, honestly. The well water, when you leave it alone, this is the main big part of the experiment the biggest part was if a pond could do the same with just sponge and the, there's a little carbon in there and all it does is make the current move on top now see it does what a lake does creates froth has algae plankton little microscopic different colored algaes and uh this is kind of what happened to our lake out here so i wasn't surprised when this happened like look at that white pvc pipe been in underwater for quite a while and that is a, uh, a terracotta pot and it has eggs on it actually now that I'm looking so it must be the severums are trying to breed in here Jerry no you can't get on that you are too big oh my god buddy you are getting heavy <laughs> but uh yeah so this all my experiments are, are completed this has been a three month uh, trial and Shark is the only way. I, th I think there's a little catfish in here, bully him, because he's he's a big shark. And any other tank, even when the things try to pick on him, it's an iridescent shark and it never stops moving. It's always swimming in circles. So, something must be bullying it. You can see my reflection on the glass. I can't see him. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come on back out in the living room. Yeah. I'm going to get them all back in the living room now that the experiment's done. Which is going to be a little weird. Because a lot of these guys don't like the fish that are in the living room. Um, so they're going to be mixed with peacock bass. And uh, they need to be the right size to be able to fend themselves. Because that's too beautiful of a fish to uh, watch get killed by a peacock bass. Or same other way around. I don't need that kind of stress on them. That's too pretty. Look at that thing.